Welcome back. The students in Joe Kennedy's class at the New School of Architecture are not designing hypothetical high-tech homes. They're working on a project they hope will actually be built in the not-too-distant future in the mountains of Nepal. It, the big earthquake showed that the traditional ways of building are, are quite dangerous, and so we want to improve upon them. Kennedy has written books on building in the developing world, and he's passionate about this project. So is, is this the map of the site? This is the map of the region, uh, the town of Penauti, where we're working is right here, but our site is right in this area right here, actually right in this vicinity right here, so a little bit outside of town. On a slope? On a very steep slope actually, so it's actually a good site because the, the work is to be for villages that are in the mountains, so having a steep site will allow us to do the best type of project most replicable in most of Nepal. The plan is to build a kind of campus where alternative building techniques are demonstrated so that the ideas can spread and really become a viral solution. Because we can't go there and build one house at a time. There's something like 750,000 houses that were knocked down. We really want to see those be rebuilt as soon as possible. The only way that's gonna happen is by the people themselves. The project has a direct link to what Nepalis on the ground need. Deep Dioja is a San Diego resident now, but he keeps close ties still with his family in Nepal. I mean, when I went, especially when I went to Nepal um, this year, then uh, a year after the earthquake, people still don't have any kind of clue on how to rebuild. I went to some of those uh, areas, saw the houses where it's like, literally, it's just uh, corrugated roofs and nothing. People are living in those situations. Um, people do want to do something better, but then um, they don't know what it is. I mean, people, like many international organizations, they've been going there and uh, doing the projects, trying to do it themselves, but not, again, the same problem, not teaching the locals to do it. Dioja has raised money for a non-profit, the Vishwaseva Foundation, through meditations in North County. <laughs> quiet the mind with the help of sound vibrations from Tibetan singing bowls. The foundation has worked with a local school and hopes to break ground this fall on the new building teaching center in Nepal. If we're going to get a tenant rainfall, how we're going to capture as much of that as we can and where we're going to store it. Kennedy has pulled together experts with experience in sustainable building to contribute to the plans. And the idea of creating a main center, which will be the, the site for teaching, as well as six different buildings here showing different types of building. So whether it's earth bag, straw bale, gabion band, which is stones within wire mesh, other types of building systems, so that people can come and see different types of systems, say, oh, this fits for my region, I'm going to use this idea. Architecture student Aisha Al-Shati says she's particularly inspired by the Nepalese cultural and spiritual values that call for a different approach to building, one that she hopes to use in her future work. And this project is literally called designing for the 99 percent because if you look at the world it's like one percent that are fortunate enough to have a nice house in a disaster free country or city. So I'm learning for a bigger perspective. I'm hoping to inspire students to really look at what's needed out there in the world and find some ways to address those huge problems that we're facing now as a planet. The students' final presentation on the project will be June 20th. Alison St. John, KPBS News.